Hey, I'm Jad Abumrad. I'm Robert Krolich. This is Radio Lab, and today, do you want to say that today? Uh, speed. <laughs> speed. <laughs> See, this is a perfect example of what we've been bumping into all hour. Humans are slow. We're just too slow. But now, yeah, hello. Is this Lena? It is. All right. Now we have a story that should make us all feel a little better. Mm-hmm. Can I just say, I didn't even think this was remotely possible, what we're about to talk about. <laughs> and the heroine of our story is Lena Vestergaard Howe. Is that, a, is that a hyphenate? No, the Vestergaard is my middle name. Howe is the last name. And my first name is Lena. So, uh, so Lena is a physicist at Harvard, and she has done something with speed that is just remarkable. It's the only way to say it. Well, well uh, if, if we sort of step back once... We asked her to walk us through what she does, step by step, because it's totally worth it. We start out with a clump of room temperature sodium. And at room temperature, sodium is actually a nice, shiny metal. Lena and her team, they take the sodium, they put it in an oven and heat it up. Exactly. And as it heats up, atoms in the sodium start to vibrate faster and then faster. And when the temperature gets to around... 350 degrees centigrade, the atoms... Form a vapor. Super high pressure. And then she forces the atoms through this little pinhole. You have a little hole in the source. So this thin stream of atoms now comes zipping out of the hole and pow! We hit them head on with a laser beam. So you bang them right in their pathway. Yes, kick them in a direction opposite to their motion. And that slows them down. Exactly. And now we can load them into what we call an optical molasses. Optical molasses. <laughs> <laughs> this is so Baroque, I love it. In the optical molasses, the atoms will be hit by laser beams from all directions. Is that your way of like saying, don't go this way, don't go this way, don't go this way, That's stop. right. Yes. You corner them in from all angles. Yes. Then we can get them to uh, really slow down. It feels a little bit like you've enslaved these atoms. I feel bad for them. <laughs> it's going to get worse. Yes, because that's not good enough. Now that she has these atoms trapped, she needs to make them sit as still as possible. So she turns off the lasers. Total darkness in the lab. And then we turn on an electromagnet. <laughs> use, the fact that the, use the fact that the atoms are small magnets to hold them in a particular point in space so they don't all fly apart. Then we can flip the magnet of these small atoms and selectively kick out the hardest, just the hardest of them, so they will fly out of the magnet and we just keep uh, the lowest energy. By flipping the magnets, you could say to the, there's one atom that's a little bit too jumpy, so you say, get out of yep. here. Get out of here, exactly. Because you, cause you want just the quietest atoms to stay. That's right. So now, after all this, Lena has this teeny little cloud. 0.1 millimeter in size, typically. Of just a few million atoms. Like 5, 10 million. And she says at this point, they're all very, very still. And because temperature is really just a measure of speed, really, you know, when atoms are moving quickly, we call that hot. When they're moving slowly, we call that cold. These atoms, because they're so still, these atoms are really cold. Colder than anything on Earth, colder than the middle of empty space. Basically, these are the coldest things that have ever been cold. Yeah, and at that point, we have a totally new state of matter. And of course, she was curious about this new state of matter. That's right. I'm a curious lady. And now we get to the part where, uh, well, this is the whole reason we're telling you this. She now decides to poke these atoms. Basically, uh, Send a light pulse in. Shoot a beam of light into this cold atom cloud. And see how it reacts. You Why? know, you have a tolling. What was it? That g- well, you know, light fascinates me. Dyn- I mean, she says, here's this thing that goes 671 million miles an hour. You know, that nothing goes faster than light. And the question just occurred to her, like, what would happen if I took the fastest thing in the universe and stuck it into the coldest thing ever made? Exactly. Yes. So she points her laser at the atom beam. cloud. The laser beam. Hits a switch. So here you have this uh, light pulse coming in. Zooming through space. Then the front edge will reach our atom cloud. And unbelievably, the light pulse in that moment goes... From 186,000 miles per second to 15 miles per hour. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> Are you kidding? No. So the light is going like... <laughs> That's right. Wow. It's inside our atom cloud. Amazing. And then... Then it just chugs along at a, at a, at a, at a leisurely speed. Something you could uh, beat on your bicycle. Yeah. You mean ride your bike faster than the light? I mean, exactly. You, you, you can sort of think of this race between a bicycle and a light pulse. I mean, imagine you could just bike next to this blob of light and you could reach out and maybe pet it a little bit. And then phew, bike on ahead, uh, but then you'd be in darkness. But you can go, go maybe to the edge of the cloud and wait for the lights and so that when it comes through, you could just catch it. Well, no, you can't catch it because when the light gets to the other side of the atom cloud... The, f- the front edge will accelerate back up to this enormous normal light speed <laughs> and then it rushes off wow. so it stretches out again. Cool. So here's can my... You, here, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Did, so, so if you've got it down to 15, is that a kind of... Uh, 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 like a, a a limit. I mean, can you can you? We we, can we you, could we could bring it lower. It, it's it's can not a stop an, light. Can you actually stop light? W- we can. What? And so that yes, laser we, goes we, in and doesn't come out. Yes. I mean, you hold it like a like a. We hold it. How do you do that? Uh, uh, okay, so what we do is uh, it's actually. Uh, okay, so things get a little technical here, but basically, probably too simply, Lena has figured out a way to tweak the properties of this atom cloud. She can make it like a brick that light bounces off of, or she can make it clear so light cruises through. In this case, what she does is she shoots the light into the atom cloud. So we slow it down. And then right at that moment, as it's chugging along. Chug, chug, chug at 15 miles an hour. She tweaks the atom cloud to make it, well, thick. And the light pulse will say, oops, Uh, it'll come to a halt. Almost like it's frozen in a block of ice. In this. Oh, so it just sits. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, it just sits. Wow. When 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 you realized what you'd done, did you do a little uh, jig or what? Did you do you have? Oh yes, s- that was amazing. That was, it was like sitting in the lab, of course, in the middle of the night, and just knowing, whoa, you are the first one who has been in this part of nature. Yeah, it was joy. You know, of course, to some extent, I'm an engineer, but. This whole idea that I can take this light pulse and bring it down to a human scale, that's something you just, uh, at a very personal level, get excited about. This is more like, you know, I mean, you can sort of say, uh, you know, like like, like, like a a sculpturer will, will create a beautiful sculpture. For me, as I was thinking about this, I actually think of it in terms of painting. Like Vermeer, you know, the painter? Mm. Like he could create this illusion that light was just suspended there on the canvas, just shimmering. Yeah. Like he'd somehow captured the light. But that was just an illusion. Lena actually did it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Do you ever, do you ever uh, wonder, do you ever like, you know, after this night, you walk out and into the, well, I imagine next day and the sun is shining and you just look at the light and you think, <laughs> oh, I've got your yeah, number. You're like Zeus, you know, you could be Zeus for a moment. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And also <laughs> perhaps being Scandinavian, right, where we love the uh, light around midsummer. Yeah. yeah, you have a whole lot of it or then a whole lot. Yes. A whole yes. lot not. Not, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe you could do something about that. Maybe you yeah. could store the light. Hold it on for the winter time. You could store it up, and then you could unleash yes. the cloud, and suddenly there would be sunshine when there was other yeah. when there was darkness. So save it, save it for the winter time. Yes. Yeah. Well, we've been doing this for a number of years, this but this is one of the cool. more remarkable <laughs> conversations we've <Amazing>. ever had. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, this is you. wonderful. Yeah, it really. But is. but you but but you didn't get to the real important stuff. Oh though. oh wait what what what, what? what? so um, we we can play a trick. The trick is we can stop and extinguish a light pulse in one part of space and revive it in a totally different location. You mean you, you, can, you transport can transport it? it? Yeah. At this point, we were like, what weird-ass science fiction movie did we just slip into? <laughs> Lena says when the light hit those atoms back in her cloud there. The light pulse cloud will create a little imprint in the atoms. It's like if you were to punch 
soft clay with your hand and then you could see the imprint of your knuckles there in the clay? That's what happens when the light hits those atoms. The light pulse will change the atoms a little bit. That's how it imprints its information in the atoms. And according to Lena, that imprint, it's like a physical impression of the light. All the information about the light, its frequency, energy, whatever. All that stuff is copied. In the atoms. So there's shadow of light? I mean, what does that mean? It's a shadow of light, yes. And now we can put, pull that imprint out. So now what we have out in free space is a perfect matter copy. You mean like physical matter? Yes. And then we can move that around. We can put it on the shelf or we can move it around. We can squish it and then we can take it over. She says if she wants to, she can then make a few tweaks to the cloud. Then the light pulse will come back to life, propagate slowly through the cloud and then exit and speed back up. So you could store, I mean, if you were... If you were President Obama and you said, I would like to put it, put the light around me right now in a time capsule for later generations to experience, he could take it mm-hmm. using your process, put it in an archive somewhere, and then... Yeah, put it in, in a, a bottle. Mm-hmm. And a thousand years later, they would they would know the light that surrounded him. Yes. No. That's what <laughs> no, she just said. No, no, that's no, no she, she just said. Yeah, that's, how would you know the difference? <laughs> light is the same. How do you know? Oh, that's the same light. Well, that it's, was it's, a, it's a contained in my matter copy that preserves the information. So when the new light turns on, it identically copies the light from before in a way that w- that makes it as, as specific yeah. as saying yeah. that's Mary Kay Jones yes. again. Or yes, whatever. that's right. Oh, man. I've also all, all, also also wondered about, you know, because we could, in our uh, lab in Cambridge, we could send a light pulse in, stop it, extinguish it, make our little matter copy, put it in a bottle. I could put it in a suitcase, say, bring it to Copenhagen, turn it into a light. But I've thought about also, how do I get that bottle through security in the airport? What would it look <laughs> like? Would it just be a bottle full of, uh, full of emptiness? It, it would be a vacuum, but there would be a little clump of atoms in there. Well, it would have to be less than three ounces of atoms, or they would have to. Well, uh-huh. it's yes, so yes. much less than three ounces. Yeah, you could just walk through the airport. you got no problems uh-huh. there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Or you can open it and be like, you want to see something cool? <laughs> <laughs> Blind him. And then, uh, <laughs> that would probably be also against the law. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. How am I going to get my light through security? <laughs> 